Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Oppenheimer. Oh, nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Pleasure. Nice pleasure. Um, well, Mr. Oppenheimer, uh, you've uh, grown uh, quite massively in popularity. And uh, quite frankly, uh, I think we should start off by uh, getting to know you. Uh, do you mind explaining yourself a little bit? Uh, yeah, I would like to. Uh, my name is Julius Robert Oppenheimer. That's my full birth given name. Uh, I grew up in New York City. Uh, both my parents were uh, German Jewish immigrants. Um, after high school, I attended Harvard, studied physics, and then I moved on to Cambridge in uh, Europe, and then eventually on to Göttingen in uh, Germany, where I met many prominent physicists and made many discoveries. Perfect, perfect. I am, um, you know, and I'm sure those those uh, times for you were absolutely amazing. Uh, and uh, you know, another question I have on my uh, mind is, uh, you know, what what got the great Oppenheimer into atomic research? What what really made you? Uh, pursue this goal that ultimately made you famous. Well, uh, truthfully, at Cambridge, at the Cavendish Laboratory, uh, I just, you know, I worked with other physicists that had experience in, you know, quantum mechanics and quantum physics, and uh, it was just quite interesting to me. It was something that, you know, I really wanted to delve into. It was a new world of science in the new age, and uh, it had not been discovered or truly researched. So, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. I completely agree. Uh, um, if you take a look behind us, um, there is a representation of your bomb. Uh, or at least the one you helped uh, work on uh, as a strong physicist. Um, would you mind telling us a little bit about the famous Manhattan Project and your involvement in it? Yes, well, the Manhattan Project was the secret project. Uh, it was joint between the U.S. military and the U.S. government. Um, its mission to, was to create a atomic weapon that could be used uh, in World War II against the Germans and what ended up being the Japanese. And, uh, yeah, it was a secret uh, operation, yeah. Absolutely. Um, to delve a little bit further, I was selected uh, to lead the mission. Um, uh, we had a secret laboratory in Los Alamos, New Mexico, uh, where we employed over 3,000 physicists and uh, other workers that were in the Manhattan Project, where we worked on the bombs and uh, you know delved into the research and you know made some discoveries. Absolutely, I uh, completely understand. Uh, one of the other things uh, that, curi that that ultimately leads me to curiosity is uh, when it comes to the bomb itself, obviously it was very, a very huge explosion or anything. Like, what, what would lead that to happen? How did these bombs work? Well, uh, in the original Manhattan Project, we came up with two types of bombs uh, using two different isotopes, uh, critical isotopes. One being uranium-235. Uh, uranium-235 is a very, very hard uh, element isotope to uh, refine. Right, so we had, uh, you know, factories around the world working on refining that, um, and then we had plutonium-239, and each element required a different type of bomb. Now, the uranium bomb, it was a gun-type bomb. So basically, how the how the the way the nuclear bombs work is, you know, we try to shoot one neutron at a nucleus of an atom as fast as we possibly can, and that will separate the nucleus and causing a chain reaction, which is called fission. Now that nucleus that was originally split now sends another neutron off and that hits another nucleus and then that splits and hits another nucleus and it just creates a tremendous amount of energy uh, one that was not seen before so we created two uh one yes. uh, was the uranium type bomb it was a gun type so we have in the center of the missile uh we have a little chamber which shoots a uranium neutron at over 3,000 feet per second and it hits a critical mass of uranium disk mass uh, the other type we had was an implosion type device that used plutonium-239, the other isotope. It was a compact core of uh, plutonium, and we had it surrounded with conventional weaponry, ex conventional explosives, and they were detonated at a precise sequence. Uh, if they were nanoseconds you know, off the sequence that we timed, it would not have worked. And those explo conventional uh, explosives would uh, compact the plutonium, the plutonium core, and those neutrons would then become, become supercritical and explode. Now, we created one, which we tested, uh, near no Los Alamos. Uh, yes. That was called the Trinity Test. That was the first ever nuclear bomb um, that was ever detonated. Um, and then the second plutonium-type device that was used was called Fat Man, which was dropped over Nagasaki. Absolutely. Uh, I see the, uh, the process is nowhere near simple. Uh, and I, I very much admire the fact that you uh, have participated in these events, uh, not only for a new step in humanity itself, uh, 
but uh, for your own research and your own good. Um, I can see why uh, physicists are calling you the bomb. <laughs> uh, another thing is, uh, you know, obviously with a man with great power such as this, how would you say it affected you mentally when you saw the first bomb go off? Well, when I first saw the bomb go off, I quoted a great Hindu work, uh, a line that says, now I am become death, destroyer of worlds. You know, we made a great scientific discovery, but we allowed, we gave a, man, a way for mankind to destroy itself. And it's something that I will wrestle with, with for the rest of my life. I mean, yes, we saved American and Japanese lives, but I don't know, it was such a terrible risk. And the atomic bomb is such a terrible, terrible thing. And yes, I helped create it. But at the end of the day, I don't know if I wish I had. I see. I don't think I could deal with that stress either. It's very terrible. I mean, because of my work, the entire human and human race could be destroyed. You know, two corrupt leaders, they get mad at each other, they send bombs to each other, and we all die. And that could all under, fall under my responsibility, which is a tremendous weight upon my shoulders. I see. I can't imagine this can be easy. Well, Mr. Oppenheimer, I thank you. And uh, uh, on a final note, I uh, hear that uh, this historical landmark has led to... Uh, and I'm sure you know by now, a famous movie that might be coming out soon. How do you feel about that, being the fact that it is about you? Well, uh, the movie is called Oppenheimer. It's set to be released on July 21st. It is directed by Christopher Nolan. He has made many great works uh, over his years. Inception, The Dark Knight, Tenet, I could go on. Um, it's quite, it's a melancholic feeling. Um, clearly, I did something terrible enough to have a biopic created about me. Absolutely. So, should I be proud of myself? I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see when the movie comes out. Absolutely. Well, folks, you heard it here. Oppenheimer himself. Thank you, Robert. It's Thank been you. A, it's been a pleasure.